Boy, have I got a story for you guys. First of all, check out this. This is that shirt that I bought, gosh, in 2016. Still got it all these years later. The story of my D-Type overdrive and how it broke and how five years later I'm finally discovering what went wrong. I purchased this D-Type M41 in the small town of Southern Oregon called Talent from a fellow David. He had a 68 P1800 and it was right after my first IPD garage sale. So we were just coming back down through Southern Oregon and we pick up this overdrive for $150. It needed new bearings, new seals, and new electrics, which is really just the electric solenoid. I had found him through the IPD classifieds and so it kind of worked out with my first road trip out there with Soren and friends. And I did a rebuild video the following year and I'll put that link down in the description box. So several weeks of work and one tetanus booster later, it actually ended up being my very first VP Auto Parts order. I didn't realize that until last night I was going through my old emails. But it was rebuilt and ready to go for my following IPD trip. This time we were driving Arthur himself. We weren't gonna be towing the car. So in 2015, 1400 miles later and four states in, we're going up a dirt road, uh, which has that washboard abs effect, and the overdrive breaks. Inexplicably, something in the transmission went wrong. I had no idea what it was. Amazingly, it was still somehow drivable through all the constant oil that was hemorrhaging out and the smoke that was happening from it spraying onto the exhaust pipe. I mean, what a mess. Arthur limped along for the remaining 350 miles. We were often on the shoulder of the otherwise gorgeous Interstate 84. And any torque that was over the amount of uh, what a dead battery Prius would give you would cause it to slip and grind and bleed out even more gear oil. So refills were needed every 50 miles. When we finally reached the destination in Portland, we actually stopped at the Dowels on the way up there and got a uh, replacement transmission from a friend, Chris. And then in Portland, another Chris, uh, no relation, he helped us swap the transmission out um, in his barn. So I really, really want to shout out to those capable, charitable locals there because people have just been so helpful with the journey of this car. Now, I took it home and about five years later, now living in California, I finally figured out through rebuilding of my J-Type transmission in Bruce, what went wrong with the D-Type all those years ago. Initially what had happened was I over adjusted the solenoid armature and I got uh, overdrive basically on all the time. There's a unit inside called the unidirectional clutch, and this thing it was difficult to understand at first, but essentially what it does is it forces the rear of the transmission to uh, be about the same speed as the rest of the gears inside. Think of it less as a clutch clutch and more like uh, roller bearings with a, a unidirectional tooth and like gears that they sort of click into. And um, it's a little difficult to explain exactly how that works. I'll try to read the information on it, but for the most part, having that overdrive engaged all the time while it made the car very sluggish at low speeds, and then as you start moving the, in, uh, the input shaft, it starts pumping the overdrive and then engaging and disengaging. It was basically stressing out the entire overdrive. And then when you go in reverse, the faster you go, the more damage you'll do as that pump really increases the pressure and then that clutch starts to engage and disengage and then the unidirectional clutch starts flexing to try to compensate for the speeds that are just going in and out incorrectly through the shaft. So if you're lucky and you engage overdrive in reverse, nothing will happen. If you're unlucky and you start driving, you'll get grinding or slipping sounds. Hopefully your, your clutch will just start slipping, but I had a really good clutch in this overdrive unit. So it was grabbing and then it was flexing and stressing that unidirectional clutch and that eventually broke on the washboard abs road. That was basically the straw that broke the camel's back. Before I left on this long trip, I did find out that my overdrive was engaged all the time, as you might remember from that old video if you watched it as a refresher, and I was able to drive fine. So it either wore down the brass washer and then that play inside broke, or it flexed the cage for the bearing and that broke, or the collar uh, that engages with the gears, uh, which is broken in about five or six pieces, you'll see shortly, is what broke as well. Lesson learned, and when I was rebuilding the J-Type here in Bruce, I didn't actually pull out the unidirectional clutch. I didn't need to. I didn't have to replace any of the bearings. It was just oil seals. When I do it again on Genevieve, we'll see what happens. So uh, in the meantime, enjoy the dissection. All right, this here is the D-Type transmission overdrive, Blake Norman Normanville, 
It was in my Volvo 122 Arthur, which uh, had the B18 engine. And this was from a P1800. I replaced the solenoid. I had gone through and resealed everything, all the gaskets, all the O-rings, the pistons, etc. And I was on a dirt road in Portland and it failed. And this is what ended up being the failure. Uh, I'll pull it apart, we'll go through everything. I'll show you exactly what happened and every piece that failed in detail. Right now it's just good for parts. There's lots of good stuff in here. The clutch, I believe to be good. And um, this is my second time pulling it apart, so I already know the clutch is good. The um, pistons, all the hardware here, the filter, the screen, um, the solenoid is brand new. And um, lots of good stuff in there, but the uh, failed pieces are in this bag, so we'll just unpack everything and take a look. Yeah, the thing that you see on the right there, that's called the unidirectional clutch. It's a uh, roller bearings and it's broke. I think the jostling on the dirt road that I took was enough to uh, put some strain on this clutch and it did it in. Now over here, you can see the actual clutch material. Um, there's a the little piece of it missing right there, but for the most part, it's complete. Well, that's pretty good, the inside of it also. Oops, and there goes that. Uh, the inside of it looks pretty good as well. So that's, that's important, so. Um, really, this is just for parts now. From there, we have our valve assembly, the centerpiece. Now, the pistons seem okay. The pistons are a little bit smaller on the D-type than they are on the J-type. And there's a filter in here. Uh, the drain plug that I had welded the socket on, and um, yeah, the new uh, A-type overdrive solenoid, which is just essentially a magnet, uh, which pulls on the back little plunger, and that little plunger controls the activation of the pump, the way that the fluid is transmitted inside of the unit. And so the brass ring here, and then this big snap ring, um, along with this piece, look at just, so these guys started really wearing down, and that was because, surprisingly, inside of here, all of that stayed fluid enough. Wow, look at the way it broke and how some of these pieces just smoothed out. That's incredible, too. So it kind of pieces together for the most part. This is the center hub of that unidirectional clutch, completely smoothed out. Lots of little pieces. The rollers are all in one shape. They haven't really been deformed terribly. Uh, the rest of it seemed to survive okay. It's just a little bit of surface rust here on the back flange. This is the speedometer gear. And then look inside there, you can see all the damage. And that was basically the uh, planetary gear set rubbing, not on this side, but this drops in. And so these two surfaces we're in some pretty strong friction for for a little bit of time. So the symptom that I was having was, um, of course, the overdrive wouldn't engage. And any time I applied more than, let's say, 20 or 30 pounds of foot pounds of torque, this would start slipping. So I had to just drive very, very, very carefully. And it was hemorrhaging oil out of um, probably one of the seals in the back. I know the pressures like to run pretty high on these things. This back shaft is probably no good. Some of these pieces will be useful. It's that, and I'll have a look in here. Okay, this guy seems to have survived just quite all right. So, still a useful back shaft. There's no damage to the speedometer gear. The, the rear bearing seems to be pretty free of any contaminants or debris from the brass or steel, and the rear flange is still okay. The clutch ring, this fella, no signs of heating, scoring. I really thought this is what broke. I thought it was the clutch that failed, but it wasn't. Okay, you can see the plunger down there where my finger is. That's the plunger that's activated by the solenoid. Right there. So I'm pulling on the solenoid lever, which is what the magnet effect does, and that pulls on the plunger which controls the valves and the pistons. So the whole front half looks pretty good. It all survived, nice. All right, I'm gonna photograph this, put it up on eBay. 
Hopefully somebody out there could use some of these parts, except for that, I'm gonna need that. All right, so now I've put everything back together and uh, yeah, the unidirectional clutch with the roller bearings and the brass washer that's in there. Um, everything's ready to go. I checked out the screen. I'll put some photos of how the screen looks, the adjuster, and um, yeah, this thing's ready to go on the eBay. Parts for these are very hard to find and so the market is a little inflated. Um, people are free to ask any price they want for these little things. Um, so good for you guys if you think you can get $300 for a used sensor section. You know, you could probably just find a whole transmission, but you know, somebody might need these parts and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put them up. So anyway, thanks for watching and everything seemed to go back together pretty nicely. This was a fun little video just to kind of go over some of this stuff on this. I do have another video that is the J-Type transmission rebuild. And yes, here is the car which receives the J-Type transmission. That's a B20 inside of this Amazon. Well, that'll be it for today. Happy motoring and in the words of Volvo, drive it like you hate it. Just don't engage overdrive in reverse.